No more Amazon rainforest? More than half of Earth's land became a desert? What just happened? Well, it doesn't happen in a snap. We had time, but we ignored it. Is there a way for us to go back the way it was? Let's speculate a scenario about what happens if the global average temperature of Earth rises by 4 degrees Celsius or 7.2 degrees Fahrenheit in this video of Discover Zen. We all know that global temperature is rising faster than ever. According to NASA and many other meteorologists, climate change will be the biggest threat in the long term, not just for humans, but for all biodiversity on Earth. The average global land and ocean surface temperature as of March 2020 was 1.16 degrees Celsius or 2.09 degrees Fahrenheit higher than that of the 20th century. And considering the current rate of carbon dioxide emissions, our global temperature will rise by 3.5 degrees Celsius or even more by the year 2100. According to NASA and the European Climate Pact, a global temperature rise by 1.5 degrees Celsius is the danger point. When we cross the critical point, the consequences will be devastating. Going above 1.5 degrees of warming puts millions more at risk of potentially life-threatening heat waves and poverty. It wipes out all coral reefs that entire ecosystems rely on worldwide. Seas swallow even more of our cities, and that's just for starters. If we do not take necessary precautions at the right time, our future is going to be catastrophic. First, let's see the impact when our planet becomes 2 degrees Celsius or 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit warmer. Sea levels will rise by 48 centimeters or 1.6 feet. Coastlines will be flooded worldwide. While the amount of fresh water may increase for high latitudes, East Africa and parts of India and Sahel Subtropical regions may lose nearly one-third of its fresh water. Making matters worse, heat waves could intensify. Tropical regions may experience heat waves for up to three months which will affect the growth of certain staple crops. These areas will likely produce less wheat and corn but slightly more soy and rice which could affect overall diets worldwide. For sea life, the situation is more dire. Warmer oceans will do irreversible damage to 99% of coral reefs. As the reefs die, it will disrupt ecosystems for up to 9 million different species. If you feel that these effects aren't enough, wait until you see what happens in the next scenario. Now let's see the impact when our planet becomes 4 degrees Celsius or 7.2 degrees Fahrenheit warmer. This scenario is actually devastating. This map, created by Parag Khanna, shows the effects of 4 degrees Celsius rise in average temperature on our planet. Antarctica is white with snow and ice on our current maps. This map has turned the continent's western end incongruously green. And recent reports confirm that Antarctica is indeed turning green. Micronesia is under the water. China, Pakistan, Southeast Asia, and most of India have been abandoned. And Europe is slowly turning into a desert. This is the world 4 degrees Celsius warmer than it is now. The brown parts of the map indicate uninhabitable areas due to floods, drought, or extreme weather. Say goodbye to the eastern seaboard of the U.S., to Mexico and Central America, to the middle third of South America. In Africa, Mozambique and Madagascar are gone. Western Antarctica is no longer icy and uninhabitable. Smart cities will thrive in newly green and pleasant lands, and in northern Canada, Scandinavia and Siberia produce great harvests to feed the billions of climate refugees. The orange parts are not much better as those are uninhabitable desert. The Amazon rainforest is now completely a desert. And the same goes for most of the US and the rest of South America, almost the entirety of Africa and the southern halves of Europe and Asia. Deserts have encroached on southern Europe, rivers have dried up, and the Alps are now snow free. The red parts are for lands lost to the rising sea level as it rises 2 meters or 6.5 feet. This may not seem a lot, but this is where the population is concentrated. In the US, for instance, counties directly on the shoreline constitute less than 10% of the total land area, but account for 40% of the total population. But there is a flip side. The green parts indicate food growing zones and compact high-rise cities. That's Western Antarctica. Couldn't believe it, huh? New Zealand, sparsely populated in our time, will also be transformed into a high-density population center. 
The same goes for Russia and Canada, which will be occupied by good infrastructure. And the UK, Scandinavia, Greenland, and Northern Russia will be occupied with compact, high-rise cities to provide shelter for much of the world's population. Also, the Bering Strait will be the largest trade route in the world. All of the U.S. is not lost because Alaska will be a perfect location to occupy. Also, a small part of the far northern states in the U.S., including Washington, Montana, North Dakota, and Minnesota will be inhabitable. Parag Khanna, the creator of this map, also speculates that the entire population of the Arctic region today is less than 4 million. Could it be 400 million within the coming 20 years? Now is the time to buy property in Greenland before it too turns green. But it's not an all happy scenario. The partial melting of ice in the polar ice caps leads to even more global warming because of the organic carbon and methane that's hidden deep inside the ice. Before we start looking at solutions, we need to understand more about global warming. Let's look at the pollutants we emit and how they contribute to rise in global temperature. We can say that global warming is primarily caused by huge emissions of carbon dioxide, but there's more to it. Even methane has one of the most important roles in global warming. It traps 84 times more heat per mass unit than carbon dioxide, and 32 times the effect when accounting for aerosol interactions. Methane emission can be man-made as well as natural. When we look at natural methane emission, Seabed permafrost is one of them. In man-made emissions, our favorite diet is one of them. Guess what? I'm talking about hamburgers, steak, etc. Livestock emissions make up anywhere between 14.5 and 18% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. Comparably, the transportation sector is responsible for around 14% of emissions. Now, let's see what are the solutions to avoid this type of catastrophic future. According to the IPCC, to avoid crossing 4 degrees Celsius change, worldwide carbon emissions would have to be cut by 40 to 70 percent between 2010 and 2050 and become zero or negative by 2100. We have to adapt to renewable resources for power generation as well as for other needs, avoid consuming livestock and get used to vegan meat. There are many startups which are producing vegan meat and getting closer to the taste of actual meat. Transportation has one of the worst impacts on our environment. So, adapt to electric vehicles. Companies like Tesla and Eviation have a great vision on renewable energy sources and we want them to succeed. Eventually, people will recognize the effects of global warming and there will be many more companies working on zero carbon emission products. There are other ways in order to save ourselves from this catastrophe too. What happens if we become a type 1 civilization and control global warming? That sounds like another idea to speculate on Discover Zen.